So the rest of the lecture notes just covers example problems, okay? So there's just a bunch of example problems. I'm applying the first and second law to get an answer, right? Put the change in entropy of the system, the amount of heat in, whatever it might be. So in this example problem, So initially, I have an ideal gas here, right? And on this side, I have a vacuum. And it's insulated so there's insulation here. And we can consider this <coughs> an isolated Isolated because my insulation is so good that no heat can cross this boundary and there's no leakage of gas through my So there's no heat or mass transfer and my boundary is so good that I don't have any change in Control volume, right? The boundary doesn't stay. So it's a, a rigid impermeable boundary to both heat and mass And I have this temporary membrane that separates my ideal gas on this side and my vacuum. So given it's an ideal gas, I have an initial temp pressure, temperature, and thus entropy, right? I could put U here and whatnot. So this is my initial state. My final state, what happens in between my initial and final is the divider breaks. So act of God, it breaks, right? It snap, spontaneous rupture of the membrane. And now my gas fills the whole container. So now I have an ideal gas. And it's at some temperature 2, T2, and of course, I have some U2, S2, H2, likewise, right? And the question is, what is the change in entropy from going from my initial state, S1, to my final state, S2? So what is the change in entropy? So I can start off doing an entropy balance, or I can start off doing an entropy balance. I would recommend that even if I ask you to solve for the final entropy, or the change in entropy, that before you even go to entropy balance, you do an energy balance. So what is the change in entropy? Well, before I do that, I'm going to do energy balance, energy in minus energy out equals my change in energy, my system, my eternal energy. And I can put this in rate form, energy in dot minus energy out dot equals delta u dot. Now, of course, I'm just looking at two states, the initial and final. So there's no sense going to rate form. So I don't need to do this. But then let's think about this. What is my total energy into my system? Zero. Draw my boundary, right? Draw my boundary. I have an isolated system. This is zero. What is my total? So there is no change in boundary. There is no heat or mass that can cross. So there's no heat in. There's no work in. There's no mass in. Likewise. This is zero. So what is my change in internal energy? Yeah. Zero. So you would think that in this case, I would have a change in internal energy because I had a gas that now occupies a larger volume. But just doing energy balance, we can see that so you can kind of see why it's good to just do energy balance right off the bat and write out everything. Because if you were to just, I know I would guess wrong, I would say that based off of this change in volume that U2 is less than U1 because it expanded, ideal gas, right? So I would think the temperature went down, which would mean that lower temperature, lower internal energy. 
So if I was just to reason through this without going through this alone, I would automatically predict that u2 is less than u1. But we can see by doing energy balance, given that it's an isolated system, that it can't, that can't happen. u2 equals u2, u1. There's no change in internal energy. So anyways, equals 0 for isolated system. And just, we said we didn't have to do this, right, part, but let's just, there is a transient that takes place, right? It takes a while for the gas to move over and fill up the whole volume, right? So there is some transient aspect, but what, what do we know has to happen for this? What is delta, what is the rate of change of energy in? It's zero, this is zero too, it's still an isolated system. So even though this might be zero, during the transients, we can already tell you that even, it, even with the transients, that this, the rate of change, so you could say that my internal energy goes, you know, might do something like this, but no, it's just straight across. It's zero the whole time. We didn't need to do this because we had initial and final states, but still writing it in rate form we can get information about this because we know that it's isolated, so for isolated system. And you know, of course, you know, for isolated system I end up as I said that some words already. And my delta U equals delta U dot equals zero. So if I write out first law, I can do it a different way. I can say Q is equal to delta U minus W, or Q dot is equal to delta U dot minus W dot, and I have zero equals zero minus zero, and likewise zero equals zero minus zero. So either way, I end up getting the same thing. So, but nevertheless, I went about I still want to find out what is my change in entropy, but I did this, and I just, by going through energy balance, I just basically proved to myself that delta U is equal to zero and the net heat transfer is equal to zero. So given that delta Q is equal to zero, I know that delta T is equal to zero. Or, or this, you know, likewise, I can say the same thing, which implies that T2 equals T1. Or I can, you know, the same thing. I can write this in terms of a CB. Well, I guess I, I can say a CB relationship, even though it's not constant volume. But I can do this. And so another way to write out this is big U is I have my mass of gas times small u, small u. which equals zero, of course, which then gives me small u2 equals small u1. So what is this a function of? What is this a function of? Temperature and pressure. I already know that T2 e T1, right? So what is my so if I know that T2 equals T1, what is my pressure? Which doesn't make much sense, but that's the way it works out. So let's go to my delta S. go through a full, so let's write out a full entropy balance. Sn minus S out equals, or plus S gen equals delta S gas. 
what, what mass entered my system, what heat entered my system, cross it out. What mass left my system, what mass or what heat left my system, cross it out. So I have my change in entropy of my gas is equal to entropy generated. Well, given that I have this, I can use a TDS relationship. So delta S gas is equal to M, the mass of gas times small s, two minus small s one. And from, can write delta small s, or I can use a TDS relation for that. So I have the integral from one to two dV dt over t plus r gas natural log d2 over d1. Or I can use, so this is the first TDS relation. Or I can use the second, m delta small s, m interval from one to two, dt, dt over t, minus r gas, natural log, d2 over d1. Second, yes, relation. Now, of course, both of these are zero. I could write it as, I could always rewrite these in terms of average quantities, but we already know that there's no change in temperature. So let's just look at this one here, which then gives me delta S equals M. Point is entropy can calculate using either the first or second TDS relation. The reason why I chose this one is because I didn't have a change in volume, so it was a little bit more complicated. So the second TDA should be used. I guess I forgot to mention that I knew the pressure initially and finally when I started going through the problem, but that would have been something I was given. So I said you should use the second TDS relationship because the initial and final pressures were provided. So this is just an example of using the first and second law to calculate the change in entropy of a system. So the, the rest of the notes have a lot of other example problems. We can go through them all. But I guess in essence what they really get down to is applying entropy and energy balance and most of them use some form of a TDS relationship to tell me what the change in entropy of my system is. So I can tell you about the heat or mass added or removed from the system and then you can use a TDS relationship to give you the change in entropy between one state and the next. Yes? Any other questions on that? So earlier in the
problems with some of the internal energy before and after is the same. That's a function of temperature and pressure. Mm -hmm. And temperature is the same. So uh, are we saying that P1 and P2 are the same, or are we saying they're different? They're different. Okay. So how do we have the same internal energy before and after? How? So it might be that the temperature actually went down while the pressure went up. So maybe that an approximation where Q is equal to zero means P1 equals T2 is wrong. Okay. But then the problem gets incredibly more complicated because then I have to look at T1, T2 here. So if the temperature T1 doesn't equal T2 based off of this, then I know that because I told you the initial and final temperature, I'd have to find two internal energies that are equal at two different temperatures and pressures. So wouldn't the change in volume compensate for the change in pressure? Wouldn't that balance it out? So you're using the ideal gas law? Yeah. I guess when I look at this problem and I see natural log of specific volume two or specific volume one, we should know that because it, the volume changes due to the span of the whole container. Well, you can use this one too. You can. It just seemed like that was the one that, that I would have used because we assumed pressure two and pressure one. Well, the only reason why I said that in the, in the bottom part is because I when I was, did this problem, I forgot to mention that you were provided the initial and final pressure.